Welcome, everybody, and thank you for joining. This is the 2023 Crush on the Concho Round 2 Front 9 coverage. Thanks a ton to Low Putt Disc Golf and our presenting sponsor, Lone Star Disc. I'm Joel Freeman, and I'm joined by my good friend, Casey White. What up? Good to be here with my buddy Joel and another beautiful sunny day in West Texas. Today, for round two, we're going to be switching it up, going to the permanent course, the middle concho, or as they call it, the lake course. Yep, here's our leaderboard. Uh, we got three familiar names and then Blake Whitehead. Casey, you know anything about Blake going into this tournament? No, I met Blake today. He's a really nice guy, and uh, you know he offered to do one of the scorecards, and you always like a guy that's a stand-up, I'll-do-the-scorecard kind of guy. Absolutely. Yeah, Blake, very nice guy. And once I saw his face, I realized I had actually played one round uh, with him before. Uh, so I think one year ago we, we played before. Out of Blake, you're going to see big forehands and pitch putts. Uh, say, a, say a few things about hole one, Casey. Hole one is a low ceiling multi-option. I would say the players who can reach this with a sidearm are definitely going to be reaching for that one skip distance driver sidearm. If you can't reach it with a sidearm, the backhand gap option is a hyzer skip or kind of a dead straight penetrating shot. This came out exactly how I wanted to. Perfect line, good skip inside the circle. That's what you want on the yeah. first hole of the day. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. On that forehand line, you, it's low ceiling flex, and you're pretty much aiming at one tree, and uh, left or right of it can work. Um, but you're going backhand route. I it's, am going backhand, and this is also partially due to the fact that I pulled a rookie mistake this morning and didn't actually check my tee time and just thought I was going to be teeing off at the same time I did the previous day. <laughs> so this is my actual first throw of the day. Cool. What is this, FD? That's a PD2. Oh, PD2. Wow. Very Not an FD at all. It's very straight. <laughs> okay, cool. Not a bad shot. Not a bad shot. I, I was satisfied. Yeah. So what is that, circle's edge? Yes. Yeah. All right, then, yeah, Emerson's lining up this forehand. Emerson, okay, can we just talk about for a second? Like, it's been said so many times before, but Emerson, you know, he's like a foot shorter than I am and yep. can throw backhand and forehand just as far as I can. I think his forehand speed is actually what impresses me the most. I mean, I've seen a lot of people be able to get a good amount of weight and weight transfer behind a disc on a backhand, but his sure. whip with the sidearm for short arms, short stature is very impressive. Yeah, absolutely. And here he is, Blake. Blake Whitehead, like I said, I mean, just like, gotta be one of the fastest, like biggest sidearms in the state of Texas. And, uh, some some really nice pitch putting that you'll see from him as well. Skipping nicely. That's tech. I would say maybe hit the ground a little bit sooner than he would have liked, but it had plenty of hyzer on it to get all the way to circle one. Sure. And he reaches for those overstable discs, so if you're ever in doubt about it hyzer and out, you know it's coming. All right, and Emerson was loving this range yesterday. Off the top. Yeah. Very solid effort to start. Myself from a little bit shorter distance than Emerson. Mm, similar result. Okay, so outside circle bids coming up a little bit high, and then Blake and I are inside the circle. Yeah. Very nice. Good you love you love seeing Blake start out start out with the two there. That's awesome. You're definitely looking at a similar distance to what you started with at round one for the first hole and starting out with another birdie. Yep. Yep. Good putt there. Good drive, good putt. Yeah, I'm just I'm happy with that. This this is one of the hardest holes on the course today. Um, and yeah, pulled out my freshly dyed Halo Destroyer there. So shout out to I think they're called Midwest Dye Company on Instagram. Go check them out. Two birdies, two pars on the first hole. Talk on, about hole two. On to hole two, it's a pretty straight shot with the trees making a pretty wide fairway. Like we said, it's a lot of low ceiling shots, but the option of sidearm or backhand here is pretty equal. Yeah. You're throwing gator three. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to go long, but I feel like I can just power this up, hit the night, hit the line nicely and Never, I just kind of threw this one a little soft. Didn't didn't come out with the speed that I wanted. Otherwise, it would have, you know, turned into the angle I wanted. But um, not bad. Still circles edge, so 
Blake is trying to do the similar. Yeah, Knocked just down got, by a tree. Got a little high. So this, you know, this property, it's very, um, <laughs> let's say, boring. Like, like not mm -hmm. easy to work with as a course designer. Um, I think the course designer was able to put together a, a shockingly, like, high level of variety. And you had a great turnover there. Yeah, a little late flip with my mind bender and... That is one of the best back ends I've ever thrown on this hole. Yeah, that was that was gorgeous. Beautiful line. Emerson right towards this tree. This is one of his favorite slow fairways. Splits the gap. Splits the gap. I found out that this disc is called the Frio. Okay, the Frio. Nice. Yeah, we've seen him pull out pull that out a few times. Um, but yeah, what I'm saying is this this property isn't very easy to work with, but they've done a really great job of giving us a lot of variety, different different shot shapes with um yeah just leaving that a little short with a with a layout that could very easily be turned into a very monotonous kind of style of I golf agree. repetitive yeah potentially like yeah, so, so i feel like the the camera is not going to be very flattering mm -hmm. to this course um but if you if you look closely uh you know for any of you viewing um yeah like appreciate the the variety yeah. that the course designer was able to accomplish with the um you know with a kind of a hard property to work with texas trees are something else with the amount of sustained winds that texas gets if a tree is standing that means it's been through a lot <laughs> that's right so that's they right. will not fold to your disc your yep. disc will stop all right so leaving my putt into the cage but two birdies two pars so i guess I guess Blake and I and you and Emerson, we kind of flip flop yep. strokes there. So we're yep. we're basically back to all square. Hole three, uh, we got an early Mando, and you're looking for a huge flare skip to the right. The biggest sidearm skip you've ever thrown with a distance driver is what you're looking for. Yep. Yeah, hard to get it like far and right enough. I pulled mine a little wide, but the skip that I got was exactly what I was looking for. Yeah. Yeah, really nice skip. And fortunate to kind of like hook around that tree as opposed to clipping it. It's very difficult to put one in the circle here. Yeah, I mean, you look at you could look at the distance. It says 280, um, but I think pretty much everyone is going to be reaching for some high speed uh, to be able to catch this kind of flare. Great shot from Emerson. Beauty. I think that was one of his bayonets. Yes. That's fast. That's disc. the right call. Yeah. So here's that same Halo Destroyer. You just softed yours a little bit. Yeah, I threw it a little little gentle. Yeah, that's... Not the worst. Yeah, I mean, perfect line and, you know, solid angle. Everything was there except the, the power. So something Blake is not lacking is power. A little high, though. So he went with a much more overstable disc than we did. So when it hit the ground with the amount of hyzer, it kind of just dug rather than giving him that skip. So he was left outside the circle. Yeah. Yeah. Comes up a little left there. Yeah, I think if he had been lower or mm -hmm. or a straighter disc, either one would, yep. have, would have done the trick. You're just going to cash in a birdie. Yeah, really nice connection for me. About 40 feet or so. Felt good to, to watch that one go in, especially after the last hole, you know. Shorter putt and didn't really do do my job there. So nice to make the correction. Circle one for birdie for me. Yep. I would nice. say my first real tester of a putt I know I should make yep. versus a putt that I can make, like, oh, this could go in. Yep. And yep. Emerson just basically parked it. Yeah, that was a great drive. Textbook drive from Emerson. Yeah, kind of like we referenced uh, in the previous round. Emerson threw a warbird. Oh, there we go. Not the bayonet. Not the bayonet. Okay. Uh, yeah, kind of one of those little confidence booster putts there. Mm -hmm. exactly. Okay, so here you go. Short technical. This is about as technical as it gets on a course like this. Double Mando. And um, OB will come into play on the left if you get a tree kick. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. This is either pick the straightest disc for sidearm or backhand, or there is a flexed option 
flex forehand option if you leak it a little bit left side of the trees. But I decided that <laughs> I was just going to focus on hitting the gap and the gap only and put myself about 70 long. Yeah, you hit a nice line, but just kind of juiced it too far. Yeah, I think this the line kind of favors a backhand, um, but you'll see players reach for, oh, huge misfire from Emerson. That's that, that's unexpected. That that was very shocking to me, and he's yeah. going to be heading to the drop zone with, with work left. Yeah. So you'll see players go to the forehand like I'm doing uh, just to kind of guarantee the gap hit. And the other thing I like about the forehand is that the – you know, tree kicks or anything weird, the spin of the disc is taking it away from that OB as opposed to towards it. Which is why I kind of was tossing back and forth was yep. the tailwind could not flip up my sidearm, and if I get a kick left off one of the right trees, I could end up out of bounds. Yeah, and then Blake takes his backdoor flex that you were talking about and kicks out of bounds. So not what Blake was hoping for there. That's a really tight line. It's kind of a risk-reward play. The tree um, kick is so common on that line. Yeah. Yeah, and I, you know, my shot, that was the right line, right angle, but just just low. Mm. Just never gave it the airspace. So. so Emerson and Blake looking at likely fours here. Blake Look. has a similar game to, if you've ever heard of him, Ryan Sheldon, who is one of mm. the farthest forehand throwers in the world, where they throw power for, or they throw sidearm for power and then backhand for touch. Nice, yeah. So I've got a, a branch a little bit in the way. I'm just trying to get the nose up and basically just lay it up. The wind said no. Yeah. I I wanted the putter to react a little differently. The wind said no. Not today. Shoot, so that's gonna be a five. Blake's gonna be looking at a five now. Not what he's looking for. Definitely not. Yeah. I'm sure you're not ecstatic about your par. Yeah, I mean, it is what it is. I think on this hole, it's more about not getting the four exactly. than it is about getting the two. Exactly. You know, so. Yeah, danger, uh, potential for danger here. So on hole four, so not not too shabby. And um, yeah, there's Blake tapping in that five. So, so yeah, decent little spread. I think we miss your your run it too. Air Spectrum is Prodigy's new line of premium lightweight discs in the mid-range, fairway, and distance driver models. Air Spectrum discs are engineered for the same shot performance of their heavier counterparts with enhanced glide. You can now get beautiful bursts of color no matter your preferred weight. Air Spectrum, bag one today at prodigydisc.com. I just think the plastic is very premium. I think it's the quality of plastic. It's unlike any other plastic that you'll find in the industry. It's something I can consistently trust. You're going to want to put multiple discs in your bag. You can only say so much where they have to eventually just try it themselves and see. Hole 5, 370 foot, what I would say is right hand, backhand hyzer because it's just the easiest way to stay away from the out of bounds but there is a pretty favorable wind, so I feel like players are basically free to do whatever they want. I'm yeah, it's it's interesting you say backhand hyzer because I always go sidearm, you know, just to get it, get it towards land, and then if I want to kind of, you know, make contact. Oh, and you, oh, my gosh. Inches from an ace. Incredible ace run. I called it. I told it to hit it. That's awesome. Let's see it again. The wind is smacking it down, putting it right where the basket Just is. Slow. And then it rolls outside the circle. Wow. So you you take away one mile per hour in wind and that thing is center. Absolutely. That's awesome. So as I was saying, I like to if I can, I make contact with the ground at circle's edge to the to one side of the basket and then I skip towards it. It's got sort of a you know, a soft skip there. Um, but still fine. Inside the circle. Emerson throwing pretty similar width to what I did, just with a little bit more overstable of a disc. Yeah. Yeah, great shot. Very nicely thrown. This is Blake's favorite disc, I would say. Champion Max, he's going to be throwing this disc a lot today. Okay, land safely. So you and Blake are... In that 35-foot range? Yes. 
Mm, just not yeah. enough effort. Yeah, some metal, but, you know, Blake so far has been putting himself, you know, in that range where you feel like you want to make it, but, oh, and that was, that was lucky. Squeaks it over the rim. <laughs> I like, I missed the putt, but it landed in the basket. So that's, that's a good little break for me. Um, as I was saying, Blake, Blake's been putting himself so far at that range where you feel like you should kind of make it, mm. make one, you know, every once in a while like maybe half of them mm -hmm. but then when you miss them all you, you start to lose that confidence even when you shouldn't feel that bad because they're they're tough putts so uh so but we'll see if blake can kind of bounce back on the putting green hole six pretty simple i would say this is what i would call a lake course whatever you want to call it middle concho <laughs> yeah. exactly thing right hand backhand hyzer water on the left yeah yeah water on the i mean really just don't throw left. That's the one oh thing, gosh. as I, I was saying. Baby. And you are throwing <laughs> it left. Straight, straight left, straight towards the OB. Um, that's pretty much the last thing you want to do. I mean, just give it some room to the right. You know, maybe take a little skip and get your birdie. This, this is a musket. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call this a musket. Emerson's throwing chupacabra. Perfect. That's exactly how you want it. That is how you're supposed to play the hole. Just See? cut it up, make it simple. Yep. What I'm, do you got in your hand? I'm going FD1 here. It's slower than an FD3, so I'm trying to just, like, give it the height to just kind of lawn dart in there. Okay. I would just say I threw it a little too straight. Yeah. Rather than wrong angle, it was just gassed up. Yeah, yeah, a little extra speed. Getting a look at Blake's backhand here. That's looking beautiful. Inside the circle. Same thing with like a blank canvas. I didn't get to see what disc that is, but I know it's a streamlined disc. Cool, yeah. Yeah, he reached for it a couple times. This is just weird with all these like <laughs> all the plant material Neck in my high. Yeah, in my in my reach back, but I was I was trying to give it a little chance, but I was actually safe over there. So mm -hmm. uh, I guess we forgot to say that, but I was in bounds. Oh That was not the basket's fault. That was a miss putt. No, I mean, yeah, it looked good from my angle. I thought you, I thought you had it, but uh, here's Blake for birdie. There he goes. Another birdie on the board for Blake. Yeah, he's hanging in there. I mean, there's, you know, there's still two thirds of the round left, so plenty of time to kind of get some momentum back, and you know, good to see Blake connect on a birdie there. We're gonna be tapping in pars. Emerson has another perk job for birdie. That's. Gonna make him looking pretty good on the scoreboard right now. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm I'm just happy to to avoid the bogey. Honestly, with with that shot, the way it was headed towards the water, I'm like, you know, content with the par. So, all right, hole seven. Uh, we got a par four, and as much as you'd like to kind of push it left towards the basket, best play is usually just to blast one out nice and straight, and then take your upshot from there. That green's pretty tight. This hole is a perfect example as play it as aggressive as you truly want to. Yeah. If you want to risk a little bit more later out of bounds on that left side, you can push it, like you said, for a closer upshot to the basket, or you can just throw a shot that you know for sure is going to be safe no matter what. Yep. Emerson just, overcooked this one a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, nice and safe. Um, but, yeah, it's going to leave him with a little more work than I, he probably wants. This is a stiletto from Blake. Not something I've ever seen before, the sidearm, but... Absolutely smoked. Yeah. Never yeah. a doubt. Yep, solid shot. A little bit of Anheuser out of the hand, and that thing's overstable. So I've got an Emperor here, I'm trying to release it on a little bit of Heiser, and then just watch it stand up to, to straight, stand up to flat. And again, I just kind of like threw it soft. Mm -hmm. And so, not too worried, but oof. But it is pushing towards that left side. So, a little scary, but. Yeah, you can't see it land from the tee pad. So, it yeah. is a little scary. Yeah. But you threw it far enough where you're good. Yep. Ultimately, it's just it's going to turn out just fine. And, I'm uh, looking for a little bit of a sweet spot in between you and Emerson. Yeah. And you found it. This is a great, great shot. 
Yep, just going for distance, not really worried too much about going left, just something in play. Looking to throw it somewhere similar to where I threw it in practice. That's sure. basically what I'm trying to do. Yep. Yeah, you don't really need to get fancy on that tee shot. Just throw it straight, hard and straight. Emerson's reaching for his mad cat here, I believe. Nice. Yeah, important to keep this shot nice and wide, and so Emerson's doing that very well. Oh, my gosh. Rings the cage. Both of you guys. And absolutely parked again. <laughs> That's awesome. Wow, great shot from Emerson. Nice to stay in bounds. And Blake's lining up an overhand here. This is the thumber with a beast. Very flippy choice of disc. That's a cool shot. And close okay. to the line, but inbounds. Yep, stays inbounds. So my understanding is, you know, for for people that throw a lot of overhands, you know, you reach for something more overstable to get, like, more distance. Yes, of course. And when you take that flippier disc in your hand, mm -hmm. it's going to check up shorter. So since that was only a 250-foot shot or so, Blake went for that flippier disc. Mm -hmm. You got a nice sidearm. That was a great shot. Yep, I was happy with that result. Hard to hard to put it that close to the basket without putting any like fear yes. of going to the wall. And I wasn't scared of it at all. Yeah. Like I, I never had a doubt that that was going to at least be inbounds and in the circle. Yeah. So that's a very nicely thrown shot. I threw this super go. soft. Go. <laughs> Asking for <laughs> it to go. I think it did. Yep. Yep. Trying to talk it into. Talking it into scooting up there. All right, Blake's. Uh, what, 35 feet, mm -hmm. circle's edge. Dealing with the reeds again like you were on the last hole. Dang, and again, it's like you can't be too mad at yourself for missing those, but he's missed like four or five, and so he's, you know, I bet he's not feeling great with the putter. Good hit from you. Yep, yep. OB, definitely in, in your thoughts there, but, you know, you're more focused on getting the birdie. You're gonna For hit, sure. You're going to draw the metal that you need to slow it down even if you do miss. Yeah, put it on a good line. Let it fall into the chains. I'm going to get back on track a little bit with a birdie there. Yeah, so, so far, not a lot of, not much movement on the, you know, on our card in terms of the scores, but we're all just kind of cruising, mm -hmm. you know, kind of still making up our minds yet about, you know, how, how good or bad our rounds are going to go. Exactly. So, all right, talk a little bit about hole eight here. Hole eight is basically shooter's choice. You can throw a straight mid. You can throw a hyzer sidearm. And I think that if you really wanted to, there is a hyzer backhand, whether you go under or over. But the choice is definitely distance driver sidearm or dead straight mid range. Sure. Yep. Yeah, I don't. Emerson's going with this outside sidearm. Uh, which is a nice play. My options, I kind of go back and forth. Yeah, and that was a great shot. Yes. I go back and forth between like a kind of a high, like slow turn backhand or just this shot right here, just Dead forehand straight, straight, at, straight it. at it. Yeah. Yep, liking this. It's pushing straight enough. It's a great distance for a gator. Yeah. Yeah, happy with that. Just try to put it out there firm and watch it go. I'm trying to copy Emerson's line, and I just never had it inside yeah. early and short and a little bit of a roll. Oh, yeah, weird little reaction there. Yeah, never quite the commitment you want to see on that. And another thumber from Blake. This is an Invictus. He used it for a similar shot to the Beast, but a little bit farther, a little more distance. Man, yeah, that was a that was a well thrown shot that came down right on the basket, but just like the last roll. hole, it had the roll that kind of put yeah. him out of position. Yeah. Ah, uh, you had a nice fair chance there, but that one just didn't leave the hand right, huh? No, and never, yeah. never really was in it mentally on that putt. All right, come on, this is a big putt for Blake. Yeah. He gets it to fall. Love to see that. Got it. Yeah, nice work from Blake to kind of right the ship a little bit there. And it is still me before you and Emerson putt for birdie. It looks like you're sitting on your cart. It looks very <laughs> close to me, but I don't think it was. Maybe it was. So when I'm uh, I'm rocking the word search shirt today. Yeah, crossword puzzle. So, yeah, yeah. So, you know, as you guys are viewing, see if you can see if you can find something. Leave it in the comments if you see any words on there. It's got like 
couple of my favorite players, a couple um, kind of like terms from disc golf history, stuff like that. So nice birdies from myself, Emerson, and Blake. He's <laughs> I'm still wearing the shirt right now. Casey's looking for stable. Something. Oh, yeah. Overstable. Which is, is what you're going to want to throw here <laughs> for a little chip shot into an island. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty short range. Uh, I would say it's slightly favorable for the backhand uh, just because the wind is usually pushing to the right. However, you're going to see Emerson go sidearm. That's Chupacabra again. So a driver just with a little touch. Yep. Yeah, it's really whatever's comfortable. I'm also going to the sidearm. Um, just just good range, good line. This is trust the angle and basically just throw it as hard as you want kind of shot it looks like for you. Yep, yep just grab the gator, put it on a good line. And, uh, yeah, this, this island is just tight enough to make you nervous, you know. Of course. Not something that you should really be too worried about most of the time. Nice shot from Blake. Um, but a, a great tournament hole, mm -hmm. you know. And I was in between the the slower like MD5 flick like you threw yep. and my FD3, and I just decided to just do a little little snapper of the FD3. I was just more comfortable with it. Yep. Yeah, that was a nice shot. Everybody's on the dance floor, looking like a likely star frame. Yeah. Nice easy putt from Blake. This is one that everybody is expecting themselves to birdie. For sure. Yeah, it's. I also like that the, the drop zone is around 35 feet yeah. or so. So you still have a chance to uh, to make a par save. But, but yeah, I, I would say the majority of the field is, is getting a birdie here. Emerson to complete the star frame. There it is. Not a bad way to close out the front nine. Let's take a look at the score, see where things are shaking out so far with the rest of the field. Okay, so you're currently six down through nine. Very impressive. Emerson rocking a similar score, but with a bogey. He's got more birdies than any of us. Oh, yeah. And I am bogey-free, a couple birdies. Like, one bad double bogey, but still under for the round. Yeah, I mean, he's birdied three out of those last four, so moving things back in the right direction. Here's our leaderboard. Uh, Nico. Like, yeah, Nico making a big push. That's cool. Wow. He's 10 down through 15. I mean, you, you kind of knew he would, right? Of course, so, of course. Putting himself back in the conversation. Nice shooting out there, Nico. GT Hancock also putting up double digits. He won this event, what, two years two ago? Two years ago. So, yeah. All right, we got, uh, you know, heading into the back nine, see how things finish out. So thanks, everybody, for joining. See you back there. <laughs>